Well, welcome back. This is our second of our six part webinar series for our Utah School Based Behavior Health Toolkit, um, collaborating to address the mental and emotional wellness for school aged children in your area. Uh, in our last webinar, we gave an overview of the framework. We looked at the five stages and the guiding principles. And uh, we looked at how we can move from an informal approach to a more formal approach. And so today we're gonna take a deeper dive into our assessment of needs stage. Um, again, if we go to that next slide, our presenters today are myself, um, Scott Aram with the Utah Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Substance Abuse and Mental Health. And we have Ashley Lauer, who's uh, with the State Board of Education Behavioral Specialist, and Tiana McCall, who's also with the State Board of Education School-Based Mental Health Specialist. And so we're gonna be reviewing um, the assessment of needs stage today. Our learning intentions are going to be that by the time you're done, you should be able to understand how to complete a comprehensive needs assessment on your own. And you will be able to understand uh, the importance of assessing community readiness in order to really effectively get started in your work. We can move to that next slide. Here's a quick review of the toolkit. Again, if this is something new to you, you might want to go back and review our last webinar where we can talk about the five stages and how they engage with each other and the importance of each of those stages. Also, the guiding principles. These are the important key pieces that are interwoven throughout the entire toolkit, and that's culture data, collaboration, and sustainability. Now, in your toolkit, you're gonna to find the following subsections within the assessment of needs stage. Uh, it's going to be a good idea that you guys get familiar with each one of these uh, and take some time in this stage, uh, and this will guide you into prompting what direction you might wanna go in. During the assessment of needs stage, the whole focus is really about getting a better lay of the land. You know, asking yourself the right questions, bringing people to the table, um, making sure that you've got various stakeholders um, and their perspectives taken into account as well. And we also wanna look at what we have and what our resources are. Uh, there's going to be a tremendous value in understanding where you're at today. Uh, regardless of where that's at, if you're new to this work and you feel that you're not in a really good place as far as the behavioral health needs of your community, that's okay. It's important to understand what that means and what that looks like in your school community before we can get started in solving that problem. Um, in our first we webinar, we did discuss the importance of starting with the end in mind. That's a big um, piece for us. We want to we want to be able to visualize what we can accomplish through this work and take some time to understand what that might look like. And so having that vision is important just as much as having an understanding of where we're at is important. And I think there's some hesitancy from folks in the field to really dive in and want to engage in an assessment, a full formal assessment of needs. Um, part of that hesitancy might might be because it uh, feels like it's, it's a, a big task, right? It's overwhelming. It might, it might be that we're just um, not excited to hear the answers, um, or maybe we have never done this before, so it's new to us. Uh, but either way, I think what, what is important to understand is knowing where you're going is key, and so is knowing where you're at in order to get and take the right steps to get to where we're, we're hoping to go. So whether you're just getting started in, in, in this work or whether you've done this for, uh, for a few years, um, taking time in this stage to conduct a formal needs assessment and resource mapping and look at the existing conditions, this, this will serve your district well. Thank you, Scott, for providing that overview for us again. Um, we'll start now by looking at um, a tool uh, from the assessment of needs stage in our in our toolkit. It is called the School Mental Health Quality Assessment, better known as the SHAPE Assessment. Um, we'll specifically be looking at the district version of that tool. And as Scott said, we know there's maybe some hesitancy in starting for a variety of reasons. Maybe one of those is not knowing where to start. And uh, this tool will give you a great place to start. 
It may feel a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, but breaking it down and looking at it piece by piece will help you get started in really formalizing this assessment and, and better understanding uh, where your district or your LEA is in, in this realm of school mental health. Uh, this tool, again, offers a way to get started in this work, and it can be found on page 11 of the toolkit if it's something that, that you're interested in looking into. So this, this tool, it's designed to be completed by teams. That includes district personnel, that includes community members, community partners who, who are working within this, uh, this space of supporting uh, the mental health of school-aged children, as well as uh, students and their families. Um, it covers seven quality domains of comprehensive school mental health. And you'll see those seven domains listed here on this, on this uh, slide. We'll also delve deeper into those domains on the following slides and we'll show you a little uh, a little snapshot of what um, what you would see in each of those quality domains. It's important to keep in mind that through the assessment um, it's not meant to be completed during one meeting. So as a team you may want to look and, and and spread this out over several meetings. you may only want to look at teaming during one meeting and then, in the next meeting, look at uh, reviewing and assessing, self-assessing the needs assessment and resource mapping. But it's important to keep in mind that it will probably take several meetings to complete. And it's, it's important to take that time um, to complete and, and answer the questions, um, have the time to answer the questions uh, in, a, in a comprehensive way. As you're moving through the assessment, you want to make sure your conversations include why you're rating certain items in a certain way and, and, and also looking at evidence that you have to support these ratings. So you really have um, a complete uh, array of information to look at. Um, as well, this, this tool is designed to um, have results that you can prioritize and that you can use in, in planning uh, key improvement areas. So again, as Scott said previously, um, <clears throat> some of the answers to these questions, you, you may not be where you want to be. And that's great to know and then great to look at that and prioritize as you're moving forward. So we'll have uh, next, we'll have Tiana look at uh, the first quality domain and we'll, we'll move from there and look at each of the quality domains in, in the shape assessment. Perfect. Thanks, Ashley, for setting the stage for the shape district assessment. Um, so we're going to start with the first quality domain, which is teaming. And before we review some of the details um, and an overview of this domain, I want to bring your attention to the scale that you'll see on the right side of the page. Um, this scale remains the same for each domain, and it spans from never to always on a scale of one to six. Um, and like Ashley mentioned, when you're choosing where you're falling within the scale, try to use some evidence to back up your decision making in, in choosing where you land on this scale. Um, so in this first domain, teaming, the focus is assessing the multidisciplinary team or teams, you may have multiple, that exist within your LEA that address the mental health needs of your students. This can look like one team, like I mentioned, that addresses everything on the continuum from mental health promotion to early intervention to treatment, or it could be multiple teams that focus on different parts of the continuum, such as um, a team that addresses school climate or a team that addresses tier two or tier three services, et cetera. Um, this domain asks you to respond to 11 questions related to teaming and additional four questions related to district support for teaming efforts, resulting in a total of 15 questions in this domain total. You'll see that pattern throughout as well. The beginning of like the beginning questions are focused on uh, the efforts done by schools in your district or your LEA. And then the remaining four are related to the district level or the LEA level support that's provided for each domain. Some examples of some questions that you'll find in this domain include the extent to which your schools meaningfully involve students and families to plan and improve the school mental health system. 
um, the extent to which you ensure teaming structures address each tier of the multi-tiered system of support, and the extent to which um, you delineate staff roles and responsibilities, among many other questions. That's just a little sampling. Um, you'll also find other concepts within the assessment stage of the toolkit in this domain, such as defining roles and engaging stakeholders. And you'll find evidence of the toolkit's guiding principles, such as collaboration and data. Um, and I'll pass it on to Ashley to go to the next domain. So our second quality domain is the needs assessment and resource mapping domain. When we're talking about needs assessment, we're talking about assessing what process we've used to identify uh, gaps between current and desired conditions and to identify strengths. Uh, this helps to identify priorities and actions. When we're looking at uh, assessing resource mapping, we're looking at the process to identify, visually represent, and share information about supports and services available, both at the school and in the community. In this domain, there are 10 questions. Uh, six questions are related to schools in the district, and four questions are related to the work of the district directly. A couple of example questions from this domain include, to what extent do schools in your district use best practices to assess student mental health strengths? And to what extent do schools in your district use best practices to conduct resource mapping or have access to an updated resource map or guide to identify existing school and community mental health services and supports? When we're looking at this domain, it, it covers uh, topics uh, of the assessment of needs stage, such as uh, taking a strengths-based approach and knowing your area. Uh, it also uh, connects to our guiding principles of data uh, and uh, culture and sustainability. It connects to, and the collaborative approach connects to all of the guiding principles. All right, the next domain that we're gonna look at is mental health screening. In this domain, the focus is assessing how well your LEA identifies students who may benefit from tier two or tier three services and supports. Um, and this is typically done by using a systematic tool or multiple tools and a systematic process. This domain asks you to respond to seven questions related to screening and additional four questions related to district support for screening efforts resulting in a total of 11 questions in this domain. Some examples of the questions that you'll find in this domain include, to what extent did schools in your district use best practices for mental health screening, planning, and implementation? And it asks, quantitative, asks for quantitative data regarding the number of students who are enrolled in your LEA, how many were screened for mental health concerns, and how many were identified as being at risk, among others. Um, and it, within this domain, you'll find other concepts within the assessment stage of the toolkit, um, such as current data practices and engaging stakeholders. Um, and then the guiding principles that align with this domain include data and sustainability. The fourth quality domain is mental health promotion services and supports. It asks your team to self-assess the activities and services that are provided to all students, uh, including promotion of positive social, emotional, and behavioral skills. This domain is really focused on assessing uh, the tier one strategies and services uh, found within the schools uh, in your district. Uh, this domain is split into 18 school-related questions and four district-related questions for a total of 22 questions. Example questions in this domain include, to what extent do schools in your district use best practices to ensure tier one services and supports fit the unique strengths, needs, and cultural linguistic considerations of students and families in your school? Also, to what extent did your district use best practices to establish and disseminate written standard policies and procedures for tier one services and supports in your schools? You'll find that uh, this domain uh, ties to the guiding principle of culture and sustainability uh, within the toolkit, as well as uh, a lot of questions 
uh, that tie to knowing your area, the knowing your area concept within this stage of the toolkit. All right, moving right along, we're going into tiers two and three. This is the early intervention and treatment services and supports domain. Um, and this is focused on assessing how well your LEA addresses the mental concerns of students who are experiencing mild distress, um, some functional impairment, or they might be at risk for a given problem or concern. Um, so look, so it splits kind of the assessment up within tier two and tier three. And then at the tier three level, how well um, your LEA addresses the mental health concerns for students who are already experiencing significant distress and functional impairment. Um, and these, these can include services provided by school employed mental health professionals, as well as community employed professionals. Um, like I mentioned, this domain is divided by tier two and tier three questions. Um, and then within each of the tiers two and three, you're asked to respond to two questions each. And then you're asked to respond to eight more questions that are in response to both tiers. And then again, the additional four questions regarding your district support of these efforts. So some samples or some examples of the questions you'll find in this domain include the percentage of students in your LEA who received tier two or tier three services and supports, what percentage of interventions were um, evidence informed, and to what extent your LEA used best practice to, practices to select those evidence informed interventions um, to provide services and supports that fit the unique needs of students and families and to support ongoing implementation efforts such as coaching. Um, you'll find other concepts within the assessment of needs stage in the toolkit um, related to strength based taking a strength based approach and examining date current data practices um, and this um, domain lands nicely with collaboration data and sustainability um, when we're looking at the guiding principles. Um, this next stage funding or this next domain funding and sustainability focuses on assessing how well your LEA utilizes strategies to optimize financial and non-financial assets that help you to maintain and improve your school mental health systems long term. This domain includes eight questions to assess the extent to which the schools in your district address this topic and then the four additional questions regarding your district support of these efforts. So there's a total of 12 questions in this domain. Some examples of the questions you'll find in this domain include the extent to which um, the schools in your LEA use best practices to have strategies in place to retain staff um, and how to maximize the expertise and resources of all mental health professionals and partners and the extent to which the schools have funding to support the three tiers of interventions one, two, and three, and maximizing your reimbursements for eligible services. Um, and this domain ties nicely with the resource mapping component of the assessment of needs stage and engaging various stakeholders. Um, and it ties into the guiding principles of collaboration and sustainability. The last quality domain of uh, this assessment is the impact. Uh, it covers how well your district and the schools within your district are documenting and sharing the long-term effects of your comprehensive school mental health system. There are three impact scores for this section. The first one is school impact or the best practices that you've used for documenting and reporting uh, within your schools. Uh, the second is district support or how the district is support, how well the district is supporting schools. And the third is the district impact or the best practices used for documenting and reporting the impact for your entire district. There are 11 total questions in this section and some example questions from this domain include, to what extent did, your, did the schools in your district use best practices to document the impact of their comprehensive school mental health systems effect on, sorry, effectiveness on educational outcomes? And to what extent did your district use best practices to document the impact of your district's comprehensive school mental health system's effectiveness on the social, emotional, and behavioral outcomes? Um, <clears throat> this this uh, quality domain uh, really lends itself well to the guiding principles of data and sustainability. It also ties to uh, 
uh, examining current data practices, opportunities, and gaps within this assessment of needs stage. Um, score summary page is at the end of this toolkit. Um, but before we take a look at this, I want to just bring your attention back to each of the domains. At the end of each domain, there's a little section at the very bottom that asks you to add up your score for each domain. So after you've answered all the questions, you can go in and add up your average score, and then you can transfer those scores to this page to help you get a comprehensive look at, at where you stand. Um, and the gauge at the bottom is just a nice visual to kind of see where you land if you're either emerging, progressing, or in mastery. You can use this summary page to target some of the next steps that you'll want to take in the future, like Ashley mentioned earlier. Um, and the, these effort, this assessment can inform future efforts such as building capacity, planning, and implementation. And as a reminder, just like was mentioned earlier, this assessment stage is really just a starting point. It's meant to bring your awareness to key areas that you're doing really well in and some areas where you may want to focus your some improvement. Um, so that's the end of this shape district assessment that we wanted to review for you. And now we're going to spend a little more time looking at a couple of other concepts within the assessment of system needs. And Scott's going to walk us through um, looking at knowing your area and community readiness. Thanks, Tiana. That, that was really helpful. And if you're in mastery on anything right now, great job. Um, you know, this is a moving target and sometimes, uh, this is why it's important that we keep coming back to this concept. We're reevaluating. Because um, just when we think we get it right, there, the bottom, sometimes it falls out. We need to rethink how we're approaching things. Uh, and vice versa, when we think uh, things are bad, maybe we realize they're not as bad as they actually are. Um, knowing your area. Uh, we have a section on page 11 in the toolkit uh, covering this concept. And I think what's uh, important to just understand from from an assessment of needs standpoint, is that a formal assessment really is just a series of questions that is guiding you to ask and consider the right things in order to make the changes and understand uh, where you're at. You're the experts. Um, we've talked a lot about whether or not it's worth the money, the bang for the buck to maybe hire a, a consultant to come in and do this work if it feels too much for us. Um, and we realized that no matter what approach you take, those answers still have to come from you. They can't come from folks like us at the state. They can't come from outside agencies. You're the experts, no doubt. And um, what you have to offer in this space is irreplaceable. Um, it makes you uniquely qualified to fill out a needs assessment and to look at the resources. So we encourage you to do that. You might find that there's some surprises along the way, things that you may uh, have learned, even if you've been in your area your whole life. Um, again, these are constant uh, moving targets that we're trying to get right. Um, also, you know, looking to your community to find out who's there of note and has some skin in the game that's willing to walk alongside you in these efforts. You know, you're going to look at stakeholders, you're going to look at services, resources inside schools and outside of schools um, and into the community and, and others, um, a constant examination of what's there so we can maximize that. And then uh, a couple concepts that I think we also touch on in, in a little bit more detail. Uh, page 19, we talk about what are your strengths, taking a strengths-based approach. I, I want to mention that this work is hard for a number of different reasons, but it's hard because sometimes we focus too much on the things that are going wrong. That taking a stakes, a strengths-based approach is the idea that instead of solely focusing on the challenges and, and the things that are difficult in this space, instead we focus and we make sure that we spend time examining, examining our strengths and making sure that we are aware of what we're doing well. Um, I will say that's important from a longevity standpoint and to uh, reduce the burnout that can be felt in this, in this work. So lean into your strengths. And then I will also mention um, when we do look at improvements, we wanna take advantage of the blue sky days. This 
came from uh, Michelle Gay, who lost her uh, daughter in Sandy Hook. And she uh, tours the country and gives advice and, and, and webinars and, and speaks to schools uh, on how to make improvements in their district. And she uses that concept of blue sky days when things are going well, relatively. Uh, we want to make sure that we can take the time during those days to plan and to be thinking about um, what needs to change. Uh, crisis, when it hits, will expose our insufficiencies. We'll start to understand where the, those gaps are uh, in those moments. So it's important that we take advantage of the good days. Uh, some of this might seem intuitive um, and it might seem like something that we don't need to formalize, um, but I will suggest again that formalizing helps us look objectively at the data drill down and ask the right questions and, and dig into the why behind um, the, 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 the reasons or the drivers of things that need to be changed. And the last point that I'll make on this slide is we just wanna avoid groupthink. Um, sometimes we come together and, and, and um, for whatever reason, um, we begin a groupthink where we're only seeing our perspective uh, this is why throughout this uh, entire toolkit, but certainly in the assessment stage, we emphasize including diverse perspectives uh, throughout your entire community. And that's one of the greatest things about our state is we have so much diversity across all the corners of our state that sometimes um, we want to make sure that we capture that voice. The assessment of needs stage is the time for us to do that. Um, these are just a couple examples I wanted to give some real um, life to what we're talking about. Um, when we say community readiness, one of the questions that comes up is ready for what, right? This context, we're looking at the school-based behavioral health movement, right? We're looking at pushing um, uh, the, the uh, school-based behavioral health uh, piece, um, but that's not the only thing that uh, we can use this framework to help improve. And this is an example of some uh, local change that happened in the San Juan County of a group of girls who understood that there was needs in their community. And they worked with a nonprofit group to help bring power to the homes uh, of the folks on the reservation that needed uh, power, that didn't have power in their homes. Again, they were able to understand that there was a need, a problem, they, they worked uh, through those steps of, of finding the resources and they were able to, on their own, um, make a change. And um, that's a great example of a local uh, community who's driving change. On the next slide, there's a couple other um, examples of state level change that we're trying to engage in. Same concepts that we're talking about when we assess the needs of where are we at. Parents Empowered is talking about um, making sure that underage drinking is reduced in our state. It's uh, in that stage of change where they're informing people of the challenges and of the risks and providing resources to parents throughout our state and information. So that stage uh, or that state of change is happening, uh, our, our change is happening on a state level. And then we also have this rally for our Great Salt Lake. This is a new one. This is interesting because as many of you may be paying attention uh, in, in this mega drought that we're in, our, our Great Salt Lake is drying up pretty rapidly. And there's now a rally, a movement uh, to save that Great Salt Lake and, and uh, led by, well, led by a number of different organizations, honestly, but uh, by our governor himself, Governor Cox, who's um, putting money and resources into making sure that this change um, could be uh, effective. So it's important to understand what drives change and lots of things can drive change. And sometimes that's tragedy. And so I wanna make a note here and just express that when high emotion is the catalyst for change, we, we wanna be even that much more um, emphasizing the importance of a formal systematic approach. Um, we want to make sure that when change is, we're ready for change and when the community is rallied behind that change, that we are uh, have thought through the important aspects of what is driving the change, what we need to target, what is being 
found in the data in order to support real change and lasting change, which ties in with our, our guiding principle of sustainability. It's important to honor the nature of the intensity of these situations, they're very real, and the behavioral health needs of our students are very real and playing out. And we should unify under this clear, agreed upon and defined problem. Community readiness um, can also follow uh, what's known as the, <coughs> excuse me, the stages of change. <clears throat> uh, the stages of change model, which is uh, oftentimes taught on an individual level. We can understand that change um, looks a little different uh, depending on your motivation for change or your understanding of, of change. And so this model is found in one of our resources. It's on. It's in our community readiness for change. I believe it's on page 19, but I'll I'll point it out in the next slide. But I wanted to introduce this individual stage of change model. And for those of you who are familiar with this, it starts with pre-contemplation. Starts with this idea that I might not even know that change is needed. Again, pre-contemplation. Um, we move into contemplation where we understand <clears throat> that there might be something uh, amiss. There might be something that might be causing a problem. And that's when we're firmly in this contemplation stage. I think most school districts in our state are at least in contemplation in regards to the behavioral health needs of our students. Next, we move into preparation. This is when we definitely understand that there's a problem and we're starting to make a plan for action. We want to know. What are the driving factors? What are the uh, important information pieces that we can get in order to make sure that we formulate a good plan? And then we move into the action phase. This is when we are taking action in regards to change. We are actively out there doing what we, we know or we think we know to be right in order to influence change. And then once that change is set in and once we've made those changes, we then maintain those changes and we continue to uh, do our best in that space. And communities, the, the reason why I actually point out this model is not only is it in one of the tools that we provide for you, but communities are a lot like individuals in the sense that they move through the stages of change before they are ready to implement the programs, right? Before they are ready to deliver interventions um, and to take other action that is, that is necessary uh, for a community to, to, to begin those changes. So uh, we can understand and you can probably get an idea for yourself of where you might be at in regards to those stages of change. And there it is, community readiness. This toolkit or this tool is located in your toolkit on page 12 um, and it can be found uh, down there at the bottom with the tools. And I think I'll pass it over to Ashley. Yes, thank you, Scott. We really appreciate all of you taking the time to, to watch this webinar. We hope as you jump into the toolkit and the tools within the assessment of needs stage, you'll recognize the importance and value of formalizing your assessment. And the tools we shared in this webinar and the rest of the tools in the toolkit are only a sample of the many tools and resources available to support your assessment uh, of, of your school mental health system. If you have any other tools you'd like to share with us, feel free to contact us using our contact information on this slide. And next month, we will post and share a recording of part three of this webinar series, uh, Building Capacity. Thank you so much again for uh, watching this webinar.